Hey guys, welcome back. This video is a continuation from the previous one where we modeled the low poly pillow or the low detailed pillow and the medium detailed pillow. We saw how to make both of those. Now we want to make one more version for the pillows, but this one is going to be a bit more detailed or more detail oriented. And I want to show you how to get that result as well. First thing is that I'm going to take uh, and just make a simple box and then with a simple edit poly, as I've put it here, I have extruded an upward section. This is going to be used as more or less a base for my pillow on which it can rest. So by just selecting this, I'm going to go ahead, export, export selected and simply call it base. There we go. Here it's pretty much all the standards. I haven't checked anything else. So I'm just exporting it like this. Now, this is going to be the first video in which, for my needs, I'm going to go over in Marvelous Designer. When you open Marvelous Designer for the first time, if you're using the uh, Marvelous Designer 4, this is how your uh, UI is going to look like. It's basically split up in half. On the left side, you have your avatar or your model. And on the right side, you have all the elements you, ha uh, you have for your cloth uh, simulations. So for this one, but for our version, I'm just going to go ahead and select all the default pieces and delete them. So click delete. Now we are left with a naked lady. We're going to go over in avatar, clear or all avatars. Now, here we go, we have a uh, empty scene in which we can do our um, cloth simulation. Uh, seeing as how this is the first video of um, going to be using Marvel's Designer, I want to just give you a quick brief introduction on what Marvel's Designer is. It's a software that's really tailored towards uh, cloth simulations. And the way it works, it's pretty simple. And if people are interested in more depth as to how to work with it, I am pretty sure that I'll find some time and make some more introductory videos. But for now, I want to just stick to showing you a simple way on making one very easy to make pillow. Now, first thing I'm going to draw up is one rectangle. So click over here and choose a rectangle. If you click and drag, you can basically uh, size it as to how much you want it. Or if you just click, it's going to give you an option in which you can manually input values and make, make it a certain size. It's, uh, general, uh, it's default in millimeters. So 50 by 50 means 50 centimeters by 50 centimeters. So I'm going to click OK. And now if I look in my other window, I basically can't see much of it because there is nothing here. So in order for this uh, pattern to appear in my screen over here, I have to click on the sync button. There you go. And now it has appeared. I'm going to select my pattern over here. Go control C, control V. And now I have one more piece over here. Re uh, I'm going to rotate this for 180 and place it behind it or next to it, however you want to call it. Now, the way that this software works is it's taking two patterns and we can stitch them together. The way to do it is you go over here where it says segment sewing. You click it and then we basically click here and right next to it. Right away, before I click, you can see we have this line going across, which is telling you that these two are going to be stitched. Now, the important thing that you want to do is make sure when you're stitching, your stitches don't cross like this, because if they do something like this, you're going to be, uh, you're going to end up with an issue. So control Z and stitch them. So they go something like this. 
Now, click here to the other side. There we go. Click on the side, click on the side. Uh, again, make sure that the stitches are not crossing each other. If it's like this, it's okay. If it's something like this, that's a problem. So make sure you don't cross the stitches. There you go. Now, the way this works is if I press the space bar, it's gonna start to simulate. So let's see how that works. There we go. I can stop it and start it whenever I want by just clicking on the space bar. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go into the edits, edit pattern, select both of them, and now just rotate them so it falls flat on the ground. So click one more time. And now that pattern has fallen to the ground. Now, so far, as we can see, this really doesn't look too much like a pillow. It looks like something that just fell, like more of a rug. So in order to make this look more like a pillow, what we need to do is utilize one of the options that Marvelous Designer offers, and that is the option of adding pressure to certain fabrics. The way we can do this is by selecting both of these patterns here and in here you have a pressure option. Here is when you click here you can uh, input your custom value. Let's try it with one and gradually increase it so we can see the uh, difference. So press one, enter. And right away we can see that something is starting to happen here. It's like this thing is starting to inflate slowly, but it's happening. Something is happening. So let's try it with two. There we go. This entire thing inflated a bit. I'm going to select one, press F so I can be centered on it. And let's try it with a higher value, like even four. There we go. Now we got something that resembles a pillow closer. Now we can either call it a quits and use this as our pillow, or since this is a tutorial in how you can make a more detailed or a higher detailed cushion, we can take this one step further and add a few more details to it. So I'm going to press this spacebar again. And the way to do this is simply, I'm going to um, get this higher. Again, I'm going to rotate it so it's something like this. And now what I want to do is take one of my patterns over here. Again, Control C, Control V above it. And this time around, I want to position it behind it like this. But before I do anything else, I'm going to click on one of the sides to just make uh, sure that one of the sides is e uh, yellow. Click to drag. You just need to be in the edit uh, pattern. Click to drag. Hold down the shift when you're dragging so you don't go uh, up or down, you just hold down shift and now it's going in a straight line. So I can make it so it's about 101 millimeters uh, longer. You can see it on the upper and lower um, line. So 101, again, hold it 100 or close something to 100. Eh, here you go, 101 upwards as well. So now this is bigger for 100 millimeters than the smaller ones. So what I want to do right now is I want to select both of these. So the inner parts, right click on them and choose freeze. This is going to make sure that when I simulate uh, the bigger part, it's not going to simulate the frozen part as well. So I'm going to press space and click it right away. There we go. Something like this. 
and yeah all right usually sometimes this can be an issue as I copied it from here and now it was thrown away but it's not a problem what we can do is click on reset 3d arrangement here and let me just unfreeze these let's unfreeze reset 3d arrangement and there we go now we can see it better this is before it started simulating so i'm going to take this control c control v and again the same deal as previously rotate it 180 degrees position it behind it and now i just want to have the stitchings go the same way as with the previous one there and there again make sure that the, that they don't cross over and also uh, since this was copied from uh, the smaller ones i want to hold on shift and select both of them and for now just turn off the pressure make it zero so only the inner ones are affected by the pressure so now i'm going to press space and we're getting something like this. I'm going to select it and rotate it and press space again and just let it simulate for a second. Let it iron out a bit. Okay, so now I have something that looks like this. I'm going to select both of the inner parts and now instead of four, I'm gonna try something like 10. There we go. That gave it some more look. And now the thing is that once we select the top ones, we can move it around until it's starting to get some folds or make it so it's looking like something that would be closer to what we need. So as you can see, we can just pull it around until we get some sort of a shape that would look good for us. Now, another important thing when you're working with Marvelous Designer is the particle distance parameters. This parameter is basically going to control how much geometry is being used in your scene. So by pressing Alt 4, so pressing alt and the four we can see how our uh, grid is going to look or how the wireframe for the model is going to look this is by particle distance of 20 so again i'm going to press alt one so it switches back so by pressing or changing the particle distance to 10 i should be getting more detail into the simulation but just make sure that you don't overdo it because you're going to need a decent computer or a decent uh, CPU so your computer doesn't freeze up. With particle distances lower than 10, it can really get um, problematic for your PC. So with particle distance of 10, as I have it right now, it's enough. So if I want to get some wrinkles or realistic looking wrinkles, what I can do is I'm going to press space again so it starts simulating again. I can manually start pulling some of the elements here. And also, if I want to add some dents or um, something like this so it looks more wrinkled, I can either pull it by hand or I can utilize some pinning, uh, some pinning techniques. Pins or the pinning techniques can be used by just holding down W and now clicking and there we go. We've added a pin. What we can do with that pin is click it and now move it around. It's going to stay here. So it's going to be stay pinned in the model. So I can use 
something like this to get some shapes going on so hold on w click now move the pin inwards that's gonna make it so we have some dents we can choose this relax it a bit put, put one more pin on the other side pull it inwards and there we have a nice looking fold we can do the same thing here we don't need to use a pin but we can just pull it inwards like this as you can see it's pretty uh, easy to control it's very interactive and you can see the changes right away so another pin over here should give it some nice looking folds one more here and there we go we have a nice uh, wrinkled looking so just wait for it and once we have something we like I'm gonna press the space again and I stopped simulating uh, to be honest it doesn't look uh, great but you get the idea with using the same techniques you can get pretty much any kind of wrinkles you want so now I can either export this or bef before I export, I can press Control W and that's gonna remove all the pins. So I'm just gonna si slightly simulate this a bit. So it, that, and there we go. I just press the space and release the space and right away, all of those little dents that come from pinning are removed and you're left with more or less something like this. So, again, if we take a look at the wireframe by pressing Alt-4, we can see that the wireframe right now is pretty um, dense. And the reason for that is, is, like we said, the particle distance. So, the way to use this would be to go and export this as an OBJ. So if I export this, sure, uh, call it mm, pillow export 01 and save. Now it's going to ask me which items I want to export. Click in, click it into centimeters. So it's the Dash Studio. Make sure you leave on unified UV coordinates on, so it ha it's unwrapped, so you don't have to re uh, unwrap it in Max, and click OK. Now you have that model uh, exported as an OBJ. Now, before we uh, at the beginning of this video, I started by making a box, and this is the box I made. Like this. The reason for making this box is that I can use objects from Max into Marvel's Designer and use them as avatars. So I'm going to go File, Import, Object, and from here I can choose the base. And it's going to ask me, do I want to load it as an avatar? So click Load as Avatar, click on Centimeters, and click OK. By doing this, now I have one uh, or an avatar or the object that I made inside Marvelous Designer. So I'm going to select my entire cushion, click, or my pillow, click, get it backwards a bit. So just angle it down, something like this. downwards press space and just wait for it so it can simulate down all right as you can see it's interacting with the avatar or the object we made here so what i can do right now is i can copy all of these four patterns on the side and get 
another pillow. So raise this a bit, pull it over here, press the space, and now both of these are going to simulate, but also they're going to have collisions between them. So when they fall into place, they're going to look natural, as we can see right here. It is taking some time because my particle distance is very low. Or actually, if you see the particle distance uh, lit up with red color or red uh, numbers, that means that the four patterns that you have selected have different particle distance. As you can see, the lower ones have 20, while the higher ones or the top ones have 10. All right, so I'm gonna stop this. And I think that we can slide in one more over here. Copy paste. And this time around though, I'm gonna select both of these, seeing as how they are already in place. Right click and freeze them so they don't have to simulate. I'm just gonna use this one, get it into place. There we go. Man, let's simulate this. Just wait for it so it drapes. And from what we can see, it's starting to drape quite well. As soon as we... Ah, there we go. I thought that we were going to have some issues over here, but there was no issues. This thing fell into place right... There we go. Okay, so all of them freeze or unfreeze. And now I can select the three of these pillows or just all of them. Go export OBJ, pillow export O2, save. And again, I'm gonna select centimeters, but this time I'm gonna untick the object shape because I don't want my avatar to be exported as well. So go OK, and it has been exported. Now, since this was placed right here, like this, when I go back into Max, and if I go and import now, that folder, there we go, pillow export O2. Import as edible poly. I can click on uh, import a single mesh or I can turn it off if I want it, if I want to have the three of them separate. So I'm gonna go import, texture coordinates, it's on. All right, import. As we can see, the three of them got in max with the exact details that we had in Marvel's Designer. So I'm going to put this as shaded and there we go. As you can see, the number of, of the polygon count is higher on the, these ones. You can see we have much more detail or as we call it in the, at the start, the high detail pillow. So, thank you for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed this one. And don't forget to check the previous video on how to make these two pillows. So if you enjoyed these, uh, these videos and you would like me to make more, subscribe, like, comment, and share it around so it can reach more people. Take care and see you in the next video.